Hey there, I'm Christina Johnson and I wanted to hop on today and give you two simple tips that will help you make better, healthier decisions more consistently so that you can lose weight for good um, and, and improve your relationship with food. So if you feel like you ever struggle to be consistent, to make the healthy choice consistently, then I think these tips are going to be really, really helpful for you. Uh, because the reality is that losing weight can feel really hard at times, right? And I think, you know, just looking at it objectively, if you think about in one given day, the number of decisions that you need to make in order to be able to lose weight, it's kind of crazy. Think about it from the time you wake up in the morning until the time you go to bed, there are hundreds of decisions that you need to make and in order to lose weight successfully. So for example, you wake up in the morning, maybe you need to choose not to hit the snooze button so that you have time to get up and prepare a healthy breakfast. Maybe in the, the morning meeting at work, you need to choose to say no to the donuts that are offered you. And then at lunchtime, you need to decide what you're going to order. Are you going to order a salmon salad or the burger and fries? And then maybe mid-afternoon, you're having that energy slump and you need to decide once again, am I going to go to the, the vending machine and get a candy bar, or go to Starbucks, get a Frappuccino, or am I going to have a healthy snack of nuts to get me through? When you're done with work, you have to make the decision. Am I going to swing through a drive through or a convenience store to pick up you know, some soda? or a quick snack um, or am I going to head straight home you get home at the end of the day and you have to decide am I going to prepare a healthy meal and if the answer is yes then you have to decide what you're going to make and then after dinner you have to decide am I going to go for a walk or am I just gonna sit on the couch and watch TV because I've had a long day and then at the end of the night it's like do I watch one more episode of Netflix or do I go to bed and get a good night's sleep and these are just, you know, a small smattering of the decisions that you make every day that determine whether or not you lose weight. And, and when I list it all out and you think about it, it's a lot of decisions and it can feel really difficult to keep making the good, healthy decision all day long. And, and then what happens is sometimes we make one decision that's not the best and then we feel like we've blown it. So we make 20 decisions well, but one decision makes us feel like we've blown the diet and that, you know, it's all over for the day. So let me know, type me in the comments if you ever feel just drained and exhausted by having to keep making the, the decisions all day long to be healthy, to make the healthy choices and in order to lose weight. I'm guessing I've definitely felt that way in the past in a lot of the women I work with. And so I'd love to know from you if you can relate to that or not. So just type me in the comments. Um, so I want to hop into these tips before I do that though, real quick, if we haven't met, I'm Christina Johnson. I'm a transformational nutrition coach and I created the emerge weight loss method. So that is the program that helps women quit the, the roller, roller coaster diet cycle and instead create a healthy, sustainable lifestyle that they feel like they can be consistent with and enjoy so that they lose weight and keep it off for good. Okay. So let's dive in. I think the first thing that we need to look at is why, why it's so hard to keep making good decisions all day long. And so there's this, this concept called decision fatigue. And have you heard of that before? Even just hit the like button if you've heard of decision fatigue before. But this is a real phenomenon. It's been studied and researched and written about. And the idea is that we all, all of us as humans are making thousands of decisions all day long, big and small. I mean, think about it. You decide what you're going to wear in the morning, what you're eating all day, what route you want to take to work. People are asking you questions, kids, coworkers, family, friends, and you have to decide what you're going to say in response. So we are making thousands of decisions all day long and that creates this this idea of decision fatigue. So we wake up in the morning and we have like this tank. We have this tank of willpower, of decision making ability, and every time that we make decisions throughout the day, it chips away at it more and more. So that by the end of the day, we are left feeling drained and exhausted. I mean, how many of you can relate to that, to just feeling by the end of the day that you're just done? Um, 
And so, so what happens is when this happens chronically, when we're in the state of decision fatigue and we get drained day after day, it can lead to issues. You know, that's what creates for some people the state of just being overwhelmed constantly or more anxiety or um, even, you know, things like brain fog and extra stress, like all of that can happen when we're like getting depleted every single day because of decision fatigue. And, and then it gets to this point at the end of the day where we're just in this state of mental overload where you no longer have the capacity by the end of the day to make a good, healthy decision. Like you're just, your brain just doesn't have it in you anymore. So I share that first of all to, to help you have a little bit of compassion on yourself that if you're struggling to make healthy decisions at the end of the day, um, because decision fatigue relates to so many different areas of our life, but I want to focus in on weight loss in particular. So, so yes, if you're struggling to make healthy decisions at the end of the day, if that's when you find yourself snacking more or, um, you know, not feeling like you want to cook or not feeling like you want to exercise, it makes sense. It makes sense if you've gone through the whole day and making all these decisions that you just don't have it in you at the end of the day to make healthy decisions anymore. So I wanted to first just share that idea of decision fatigue with you so you kind of can see what's going on in your mind and your body. But also, I'm always about giving hope. Just because this is what happens doesn't mean there's not something we can do about it. And so that's why I wanna share two tips that will help uh, counteract this problem. Because the reality is that when we make lots of decisions every day, we will start to reach that point of decision fatigue. And when it comes to making healthy food choices, if, especially at night, if you don't have that energy left to keep making good choices, then it's going to be really hard to lose weight because you might do well during the day, but then every night, or maybe it's the weekend where you tend to splurge or you know do things that, that aren't helping your weight loss goal. So two things that you can do to uh, kind of reduce the decision fatigue and actually help boost your willpower so that you're more likely to make healthy choices. Number one is we need to meal plan. I know that this is something a lot of you might have heard me talk about before. Everyone I work with in the Emerge program, I'm constantly talking about the importance of meal planning because what I have seen is that women who are meal planning are so much more likely to be successful at losing weight. And women who are not meal planning, they might do well for a while, but they are the ones who are more likely to get off track because they don't have that plan. Uh, and so how meal planning is helpful is if you think about it, like let's say on the weekend, maybe you have less stress on the weekends, and so you make your meal plan on the weekend and you commit to following it. So you know what you're going to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Friday, and you have the groceries on hand. This does not mean you have to spend hours meal prepping. So I want to be clear, meal planning and meal prepping are two separate things, and I'm specifically talking about meal planning. So that is just writing out what you are going to eat every day, making a grocery list, and getting the groceries so you have it on hand. If you want to do some meal prepping, great, but let's at least focus on the meal plan. So, so that's the first tip is you make the meal plan on the weekend so that you know what you're going to eat during the week. But the key here is that when you make that meal plan, you have to commit to following it. Like mentally make that decision that you are going to follow this meal plan throughout the week. Because what happens then is when Monday night rolls around and you had a long Monday and you don't want to cook a healthy meal, you don't have to get to that point Monday night and think, do I want to cook a healthy meal or not? It's not even on the table because you already decided this is what I'm doing for dinner Monday night. And so it's one less decision to make. And when you make all your eating decisions at one time, think about how many eating decisions that's saving throughout the week. So it really will lessen the mental load when you decide in advance what you're eating. And then in the moment, you're going to be more likely to make the healthy choice because you already decided to do it. So meal planning, I know that it is not always the most favorite thing to do. I know that it can feel like a lot of work or overwhelming, but I promise you that when you do that, you will feel so much less mental stress 
throughout the week because you're not constantly thinking about what you're going to eat. So it will, that decision fatigue, it's going to uh, lessen it a bit because you have fewer decisions and mental load that you're carrying every single day. So that is tip number one, make that meal plan on the weekend. Tip number two is to make your exercise plan on the weekend. So on the weekend, look at your calendar and decide which days you will exercise. Whether that's going for a walk, going to the gym, whatever you do, it doesn't matter, but decide when you're going to do it. Not just the day, but the time and decide what you're going to do. So maybe you're someone that walks a few days a week, maybe you go to the gym a couple days a week. You need to plan in advance. Okay, Monday morning, I'm going for a walk. Tuesday after work, I'm going to the gym. Wednesday, like it needs to be that specific. So that again, when it comes to Tuesday night, it's not a matter of should I go to the gym or just go home? That's not even on the table because you already decided that Tuesday night you're going to the gym. And it's one less decision to make in the moment because you're not trying to figure out what am I going to do. You already know. You know what the when you're exercising and what the plan is. So, so those are my two tips for lessening the decision fatigue, making it more likely that you will be consistent. Make a meal plan and make a schedule for when you will exercise and what you will do. But I have one really big important caveat that I do want to mention here. When you make your meal plan or when you make your plan to exercise, you need to also make the mental commitment, the determination that you will follow the plan. Because here's what I see happens. A lot of times I'll be talking with women and they'll make their plan for the week and then I'll ask them, okay, how confident do you feel like you're going to follow through on this meal plan and that at the end of the week you'll have done it all. And they're like, well, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. Um, or sometimes I hear, well, you know, as long as this and this doesn't happen, then I'll be able to do it. Or, you know, it's just all these kind of caveats that we, we put on ourselves. So when you make your meal plan or when you make your exercise plan, if you notice any of those thoughts coming up, if you notice yourself thinking, okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do my best to follow this. I'm gonna try to make a meal plan. I'm, I'm going to try to follow through on the exercise plan. Then just know that is a red flag. That is a red flag that you may not be as likely to follow through on that. So what we wanna do, and this is what I do when I'm coaching clients, you know, we talk about, okay, what are you, you're gonna make a meal plan, so let's talk about how likely are you to follow through on that. And if they're not 99, 100% sure, then we're gonna talk about, okay, what can you do to make it more likely that you will follow through? And so one other tip I just wanna share to make it more likely that you will follow through on it is to make it realistic. So if you are just starting meal planning or just starting an exercise plan, you know, be realistic with what you're going to accomplish. Maybe week one, you are, for your meal plan, just making really simple dinners. Maybe you're taking all of your family's favorite go-tos, you're just plugging them in, you're not worrying if they're healthy or not, but the goal is just to get into a meal planning routine and to follow it. Um, or maybe if you're trying to get into this exercise plan, maybe the plan is just to go for a five minute walk every day after dinner. Keep it simple, keep it realistic. We need to get in the habit of meal planning, in the habit of exercising, and then once you're in the habit of doing it and following through, well then we can increase the intensity of it. Then you can make it uh, more fine-tuned. But to begin with, make it realistic and make that mental decision that you are going to follow it, no matter what, that this is your plan and you will follow through. We need to start building that trust in ourselves that when we say we're going to do something, we are going to do it barring some completely unforeseen circumstance. I mean, there's always cases obviously where, you know, life just gets in the way, but we need to be pretty sure that almost always we're going to follow through on what we say we're going to do for ourselves. Okay, so here is your action step. I will challenge you to choose one. Choose either to make a meal plan or an exercise plan for the upcoming week. 
And right now, schedule in when you're going to do it. Decide right now, when are you going to make that meal plan? When are you going to make that exercise plan? And then let me know in the comments which one you're choosing. Are you going to commit to doing a meal plan? Are you going to commit to making an exercise plan for the week? Um, so choose one, put it in the comments, let me know what you're committed to. And then, you know, if you are, are just at the point where you want to figure out how to quit dieting and how to create a healthy, sustainable lifestyle so that you lose weight for good, so that you're not having to worry about your health, so that you're not having to constantly restart uh, the diet, you know, cycle on Monday, then I would invite you to book a complimentary call with me so we can figure out what that plan needs to be from A to Z so that you lose weight for good, so that you improve your health and that you feel really comfortable in your body. Like that is my goal for you. And so if you're interested in learning more about that and to see how I can help you so that you don't have to figure it out on your own anymore, because honestly, that is one more thing that adds to our decision fatigue. Having to research what diet to try, having to figure out is this healthy or is this healthy, having to figure out where to start, that alone adds so many decisions to your plate. So if you just want to pass that off, I've done the research, I've had a proven plan that has helped many women successfully lose weight. So if you just wanna outsource that, give me like the chance to guide you through a plan so that you can lose weight for good, then I would invite you to book a complimentary call so we can figure out if the Emerge program is right for you or not. And whether or not you end up working with me in the Emerge program, this call will help give you clarity on what you need to do to lose weight for good. So I will put a link to that in the comments so that you can book that complimentary call. And then again, make sure you let me know if you are going to be meal planning or creating an exercise plan and if you have any questions. So I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.